What's up, Men17 fans? Today we're going to be giving you a tip on how to, what are the top five things you can do to prepare your offense for Mad NFL uh, 18. All right, guys, so the first thing that I want to recommend to you is, is to develop your template. We talked about this in, our, in a previous video we did that spoke about uh, the top five ways to get your game ready. And this is now going to, we're going to look at it specifically as it applies to offense. And uh, I want to I want to give you basically five things, and that's the first thing is to develop your template. Now the template basically what it means is you want to figure out what is your philosophy, what is your standard, what is your protocol, and the way we kind of do it uh, essentially is you want to get to a point where all you have to do when Madden 18 comes out is basically fill the game in with the plays. Okay, so you already know. You, you already know what playbook you're probably going to be running. You'll actually be able to look at the playbooks before the game gets launched, so you want to make sure you're doing that to just kind of try to figure out and identify what you're probably going to do. And then the, um, the, the other thing you want to do uh, is you want to figure out when you're looking at your... Um, I was trying to slide there. When you're looking at your offense through that lens of trying to figure out how to develop a template, you want to figure out how many plays do you want? Do they all need to come from the same formation? Uh, what are you looking for when you're looking for a play? So for me, I'm looking for can I have a power and a counter play? That's my basic philosophy on how I play the game. My plays all, what you'll find is in all of my schemes, I have one play that is what I consider a power play which is something I can establish, okay? Then the counter play is something that I can use off of my power play, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. Basically, what if you distill it down enough, what you end up coming out with is that I'm going to have two main plays that I run, and they're going to run in contrast to one another. That's basically the idea. And that's how I, uh, that's really how I develop my entire offense, okay? And I try to find key routes, okay? So that leads us to our second tip. So the second tip in the top five ways to do this, and probably the most important if you're going to like hone in on one thing for the offense, even though developing your template's important, I think it's the most important for both sides of the ball. The second one is really, really important as it applies to offense, and that is to learn how to read the defense. Learn how to read the defense. Learn what you're looking for. So right here, he's got cornerbacks back. That tells me he's probably uh, in some kind of cover four defense. He's actually going to intercept me there. Good play by him. I, I knew he was probably going to get me. Uh, I should have checked it down to something else. It was the end of the half I was trying to force two to win. Anyways, you want to try to figure out um, how to read the defenses, how to read a cover four versus a cover two. So what I recommend doing is going into practice mode and just kind of cycling through them, try to figure out what are the things that they do in cover four that they don't do in cover two. What are the what, what are the key players you can watch? Like for me, I look at the strong safety on the on the weak side of the field every play because what that tells me is that safety if he goes down if his first initial movement is front, that means it's probably either cover cover three or cover one man blitz or something like that normally if he goes back at first that means he's going to be in cover two if he flares and you just kind of go through those principles okay so just make sure you know how to read the defense that's the biggest thing the, the third thing that you want to do uh, when you're trying to prepare your offense specifically for men 17 is you want to go back and play old maddens and you want to figure out what carries over um, so what I rec what I what I'm going to do here uh, come probably a couple days is I'm going to be going through my uh, my entire Madden library of Madden 12, Madden 13, Madden 14, Madden 16, all those things. And I, I forced that again on purpose, there, actually. Uh, but anyways. What you want to do is you want to look for that, and what that's going to tell you is it's going to say, okay, so tight formations. What it's probably going to tell you is split close. Formations like that are always good formations to have at your disposal. Okay, so then that way you know, okay, this is a formation that has worked in Madden 12, it's worked in Madden 13, it's worked in Madden 14, 15, 16, 17, all the Maddens it's worked. That means it's probably going to work in Madden. So you want to figure out what are the what are the commonalities. That's the biggest thing. So again, that's the third principle. The fourth principle is to figure out what routes you want to look for. To me, uh, that's where I have a, a, a. If you Google search this article, it's called Dan Dan Gonzalez Complete Passing System. I did a few videos on it last season, uh, but I think it's better if you guys just look at the article yourselves. What you'll find if you look at this article 
because you will find a ton of feedback and content on how you want to actually put your routes together when you're making a play. And to me, it's it's one of the most effective uh, effective training guides for developing a passing offense. Okay, so you definitely want to check that out and just see what they have to offer. Uh, as I get roasted here, this John Ross guy is good. The fourth thing, um, uh, or the this four, see, down, so I'm kind of going off stuff. The fourth thing that I was going to recommend you guys do, if that, you know, I'll give you an extra tip too. The fourth thing that I recommend you guys do is figure out your team, your lineup, what type of players you want. So, so like for example, I know right now, here's what I want. So on my wide receivers, I need a, a big target who can catch, like, make spectacular catches. I need a quick target who can outrun the defense in case things go crazy. And I need some kind of target that I could throw underneath drags, quick slants, that kind of stuff, that Julian Edelman type away. receiver. So basically, the, to me, if you put a perfect receiving core together, it would be Randy Moss, it would be uh, Julian Edelman, and then it would probably be like uh, Calvin Johnson, or Calvin Benjamin, and something like that, in a mutt scenario. Okay, so that's kind of how you look at it. You want to look for your quarterback as well. Do you want a... Do you want a pocket game, pass or do you want a mobile offense, quarterback? If you want a mobile quarterback, it changes everything uh, from how, from a, from a perspective of how you structure your team. That's why it's so important to know these things going in. So you kind of know what your preference is. Do you want a right-handed quarterback or do you want a left-handed quarterback? So you want to kind of try to figure out who are your key players that you're going to add in. Um, so if you're a run-first guy, that means good offensive line, good tight ends, big targets. You know. So you got to figure out what all that means. So try to figure out your personnel. My is, is basically what I'm trying to say. And then the last thing that you want to do is you want to trim the fat. And this is probably one of the toughest things for people to do in Madden. And it's actually, in my opinion, the most important thing you can do no matter where you're at in Madden other than developing your template. Once you have your template, then you need to cut anything that is contra contradictory to it. Um, anything. So, so like, that's what I'm doing right now, and it's hard for me, and I recommend doing it. Like, it's so difficult for me right now to cut certain plays I don't want to cut. So, for example, and I've done it gradually throughout the season, but basically what you'll find is I, I don't run the same things that I ran last year. I just don't. And the main reason is because I, I can't, and I also don't run the same, I don't run as much. So, like, I literally run very, very few setups. Yeah, uh, that one. Got lucky there. Uh, but I run very, very few setups. Literally, I have a left side, a right side, and then I have a constraint play and a running back. And that's pretty much it. The reason that you want to keep it simple, you want to keep it effective, is because then it, it forces the defense to have to respect the little things, the little things that you could do from an offensive standpoint, because they're all so powerful. So that's kind of the idea, is cut to fat. So, so for example, let me just show you a version. So this wide trip's open. So this is an example of cutting the fat. So a play that I like to do out of this, and a lot of people like to do this, is, uh, is I like to put my running back here on an out route. I put the tight end. This is the exact setup, literally. You could, you could do this and it'll work. Uh, you'll see here, I'll, I'll hit the running back here, but I could run this play up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. It's what I would call, and what most people would say is a money play, okay? It's, it's what they would call a money play. And the reason that I'm even telling you about it, most people probably already know about it, but the reason I'm even making a point to say anything is because it doesn't apply because it's a completely different formation. There's all, court, all sorts of things. They're my freaking running back getting blocked. So, but there's all sorts of different things that it doesn't fit within my template. That's what I mean by cutting the fat. So figure out what are the plays that you're wasting your time on because you don't need them and cut it. Literally cut it. Say goodbye to it. I know you're emotionally attached to it. Just get rid of it. Cut it. Get rid of it completely. Get rid of it. I'm telling you, I know it seems harsh to get rid of plays that you've spent time in the lab developing, it really is going to help you. It really will. Uh, because what will happen is, as a result, you'll start doing things. Uh, you'll start really trimming your playbook down a lot. And then... Uh, You'll see a lot of you'll see a lot of rewards on I'm telling you guys. So check that out. Try those five principles and let me know what you think in the comments. What are your go-to principles right now that are gonna help your offense get better 
for Madden NFL 18. Thank you guys so much for watching. And also, real quick, be sure to come back because we're going to have another video soon that talks about the top five things you can do on the defensive side of the ball to prepare the Madden.